Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to Soul Food International Ministries. Official first or first official sabbatical service. We bless the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Glory, have your way, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. And listen, let me say this to you, people of God. We ain't did nothing wrong. If you usually share this broadcast, don't switch up now. If you shared it on Sunday, you can share it on the Sabbath. Because we're in the scripture. The Bible says countless times over and over again that it was the Sabbath that they came and entered into the synagogue and taught and learned and heard the word from God. So if you can share it on Sunday, on a day that we don't even have no scripture reference to, then surely you can share it on the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Because we are in the scripture. Glory to God. Have your way today, God. And I'm under the Bahoy outside. He can and I'm under the Bahorian Sea. Handa da da sanda the Bahorian Sea under. Hallelujah. Have your way today, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister, uh, Brother Red and Sister Tracy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Handa da da handa the Bahorian Amanda de Behea Sai. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless your brother Mark Johnson. I see you. Hallelujah. God bless your minister Roman. Hallelujah. God bless you, Elder Thurman. God bless you. I don't see no shares. Now, y'all know I don't normally ask y'all to share the post. But the point of the, the, the point that I'm making is if you shared it on Sunday, what are you afraid to share it on your timeline on the actual Sabbath day? You got to come out of that religious stuff. Did you hear me? If you was... Oh, God, help me today. If you share our broadcast on Sunday, what will prohibit you from sharing it on the Sabbath that the scripture tells us that they came together to worship the Lord? Don't be stuck in religion. Hallelujah. Don't be stuck in that man-made stuff. Come on. Hallelujah. And let me say this, <clears throat> hallelujah. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister Pat, and everybody that's on. Let me say this, today I shared this post to my personal page, but this will be the first and last time that I personally will share it to my personal page. Why? Because now that we're coming on on the Sabbath, that means that, see on Sunday, you got a lot of people doing church. So therefore, you know, it's just the norm. But now that we're coming on on the Sabbath, we'll stick out more like a sore thumb. And so that means there'll be more attention. That's not the purpose of why we did it, which means that some people will just come just to be spectators. And the house of the Lord is not a spectator sport. So therefore, the Lord has given it to me not to share it on my timeline on my personal timeline, just to cut down on spectator sports, just to come to see. So if you follow this page, or if you are with us in some sense, please make sure you go to the church page and like and follow so that you can get the notifications when we come on. Because some people only know that we're on when I share it to my personal page. So please like the church page. So you won't miss the broadcast going forward. God bless you. <clears throat> Let's get started, people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11 and 30 declares that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. 
and he that win of souls is wise. Hallelujah. Our mission decree is we seek to preach, teach, and live by example the rightly divided truth of God's word. We decree as we are called to be fruitful that multiplication be made in all those joined to this ministry's mandate. Hallelujah. Our goal is to produce mature disciples of Christ. Our focus teaching the importance of personal relationship with God. Our mission is the fruition of Proverbs 11 and 30. Our empowerment is none other than the person of the Holy Ghost. We are sons and daughters of promise. The Lord shall know each of us by name and by his works that are found within us. For the fruit of the spirit is superior to spiritual gifts alone. I want to thank everybody for being here today. Glory to God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord God, we come before you humbly. Father God, we are nothing without you. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, I call on you and your Holy Spirit that makes preaching easy. That God, that you will open up my mouth and fill it and speak through me what you have for your people today. Lord God, I pray that you would take complete control. Speak as only you can, oh God. May I decrease in my thoughts and my opinions. And that the word, the everlasting, unchanging word would increase. And that out of my belly that it would flow as rivers of living water. And Father God, I pray that your ears, for the, the people of God's ears and our eyes will become open. By way of revelation, because you speak. For man shall not live by bread alone, God. And I'm not mine so. But by every word that proceeds from your mouth. Lord God, even as it pertains to this subject matter, I don't know what scripture that you would have me to come from. But God, I give it over to you right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, let the angels of the Lord fill the room. That the, that the atmosphere will be shifted to be conducive to your presence. And lastly, God, the Bible said that you inhabit the praises of your people. Let us come with sincere hearts, God. And I'm under the behold you. Oh, God, fill our hearts with your presence. Oh, God, we love you and we adore you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And I'm under behold you, I'm sire. I am ansi and the Lord, i Handa behind your Sunday, baby, hey, and so. Glory to your name, God. Anaman so, yananamahaya. Help me with this today, God. <clears throat> People of God, today we want to talk about spiritual amnesia. Spiritual amnesia. Hallelujah. Amnesia is a form of memory loss, but it's so much deeper. Some people with amnesia have difficulty forming new memories. Remember that part right there. Others can't recall facts or past experiences. People with amnesia usually retain knowledge of their own identity as well as motor skills. Let me read that again. What is amnesia? It is a loss of memory. Um, amnesia is a form of memory loss. Some people with amnesia have difficult to, difficulty forming new memories, while others can't recall facts. My God, I just felt that right there in the Holy Ghost. While others cannot recall facts. Because as I preached some two weeks ago, people of God, where the body of Christ has come and where we are in this dispensation of time is that people's opinions have been lifted. And it stinks in the nostrils of God because the scripture says, let God be true and let every man be a liar. The scripture says, I am the Lord thy God, and beside me there is no other. This is God, and we've lifted our opinions, we've lifted our desires, we've lifted our motives, we lifted how we see it and what we think beside him. And he said, beside me there is no other God. He, it, it says that one form of amnesia is the ability 
or the lack of ability to recall what is factual. My God. It helps or not helps rather, but, but it hurts the ability to recall things in the past. People with amnesia usually retain knowledge of their own identity as well as motor skills. In other words, you, 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 you might can remember some things about yourself, but it seems as if everything else has been lost in translation, lost along the way, lost in the journey. Glory to God, I need you to help me today, Father God. Hallelujah. It, 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 it goes on to give this disclaimer about natural amnesia. Mild memory loss is a normal part of aging. But significant memory loss or the inability to form new memories may indicate the presence of an amnestic disorder. People of God, today we want to talk about spiritual amnesia. Help me, God. Spiritual amnesia. And people of God, I come to you plainly and I say to you that some of us have forgotten who we are. My God. Some of us have forgotten who the God that we serve is. Some of us Glory to God cannot remember what the Father have brought you through, my God. And some of us have forgotten what is the factual, unadulterated truth of God's word that is infallible and cannot be changed. Some of us, our opinions stink in the nostrils of God. Some of us have lifted up media and television and what, my God, my God, who, whoever your favorite news broadcaster is on channel two, and you believe them rather than the fact of God's word. And so now you're off and you're in error. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Because, my Jesus, my, 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 my. Because the book of John begins to deal with my God today. Oh, God, where is my notes? Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Let me grab this note real quick. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Here I come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Pardon me, everybody. I forgot I had one set of notes and I printed out the wrong or the, the previous one and did not pre print out the most recent. So I apologize for the disruption. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're talking about spiritual amnesia. And it's interesting that as I thought on, okay, Lord, but what scripture 
should I uh, uh, deal with today? And, and, and let me finish. Let me finish the notations as it pertains to what natural or physical, the physical ailment of amnesia is. It says that the primary symptoms of, of, of amnesia is memory loss or, or, or inability to form new memories. I told you guys that part. If you have amnesia, you will have difficulty recalling facts, events, places, or specific details. It says that the details can range from what you ate this morning to the name of the current president. You will still retain your motor skills, such as your ability to walk, as well as fluency in any languages you speak. And here's the thing, but this is what I did not know. There are multiple types of amnesia, and they range from retrograde amnesia, anterograde amnesia, and transient global amnesia. And there's one last one called infantile amnesia. And we'll deal with those, glory to God, perhaps as the Lord say the same one by one. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And, 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 and anterograde amnesia is when you, when you have anterograde amnesia, we're talking about spiritual amnesia today. Help me, Holy Ghost. It says you can't form new memories. Hear me. It says you cannot form new memories when you have, and we're going to make it spiritual, when you have spiritual anterograde amnesia. It causes you to not be able to form new memories. It says this effect can be temporary. For example, you can experience it during a blackout caused by too much alcohol. Now, this is natural. It can also be permanent. You can experience it if the area of your brain known as your hippocampus is damaged. Your hippocampus plays an important role in forming memories. I, 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 I want to say this real quick before I get into the, 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 what, what the Lord has given me and the spiritual correlation as it pertains to anterograde amnesia. It says you have a, my God, it says that it causes you to not be able to form new memories. And people who got what I would like to say to some of us is that some of us have been beaten upside the head so much. Some of us have suffered spiritual brain injuries. That, that some of us have been knocked down when only trying to serve the Lord. Thus to form something new. Glory to God. In other words, to get up and try again. Glory to God seems to be a mental or should I say a spiritual block. Because your memory your ability to form a new thing, my God, is under attack. Your ability to form a new thing, my God, your ability to step out of the things that are behind us and press toward the mark and press toward the newness of Christ Jesus. Glory to God has been cut off and shut down from your spiritual hippocampus. Hallelujah. It's created a spiritual block that has been developed. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but that they, 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 they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. But spiritual wickedness or wickednesses causes you not to see your potential and your ability to, oh my God, that is still left in you and to, oh God, to come into your promise. Because your ability to form new memories are under attack. You've been knocked down. You, you've been trodden under. You, 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 you've tried so many times and it did not work. And it seemed as if your efforts have come to nothing. And so now, have, my God, have you ever seen where if you get a dog and you put spikes at the end of your yard, 
The dog will go out of the yard so many times, but when the spikes are there, there will become that there will become a a mental block, a, a a mental block in the dog's mind that long after you have taken the spikes off of the edges of your lawn, the dog has a mental my God imprisonment that he or she will no longer go beyond what that barrier has created for it long, although they no longer know that what was keeping them from going past that point is no longer an issue. The Bible says, glory to God, that when we are in Christ Jesus, we are new creatures. And I understand and I know, glory to God, that some of us have, have, have experienced what we consider failures while we were in Christ Jesus. But let me help somebody understand something. Sometimes God had to allow you to what looks like failure because of this. Because although God called you to the kingdom and God called you to the gospel, and he called you to preach and he called you to start that business and he called you to do something. Glory to God. That was that that, 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 that was world changing. The thing is, is that we're in a season and in an hour and a time. Glory to God. Where everything is microwavable and we want everything now. But I understand that there is a thing that no matter how great he's called you and no matter what anointing he's placed on you, there is a thing called time. There is a thing whereby the Lord creates everything in its season. We know the scripture in Ecclesiastes 3. It says for everything there is a season. And some things may just be because you were moving out of the timing of the Lord. And he had to allow it to my God fall apart. He had to allow it not to work the way you saw it. Because Proverbs 16 and 9 declares that a man's heart deviseth his way. But it is the Lord. Lord that directs his step and in the direction of the Lord that also includes the timing and the season. Some of us, we have spiritual anterograde amnesia. We're not able to form new memories. Glory to God. Why? Because glory to God, as I said before, spiritual wickednesses, fiery darts of the enemy, in some cases, causes you not to see your potential and the ability still left in you to come into your promise after all your fails, your mishaps, your failures. Because remember that a just man falleth seven times. Hallelujah. But he gets back up and it might just be for some of us, for some of you, that you might have just been, oh my God, one step next into perfection if you had just gotten up again. But for some of us, you stayed there. You settled there. When the, my God, the Bible said that when the prodigal son had wasted all of his living, wasted all of his inheritance, he waddled in, my God, my God, my God, in his mess. It was some time before he came to his senses. And some of us are, are, are in a place of anterograde amnesia where it's woe is me. I've tried so many times, Lord, and it just don't seem to work. So I'm not going to keep trying. I'm not going to get up again. I've I i I've tried this holy thing, Lord, but it just seemed like every time so-and-so called, I come short. It seemed like every time this situation presents itself, I come short. It seems like this, that, and the other. But the Bible said that we are washed and we're renewed by the washing of the word. And if we just keep coming to where the wall, God, where the water is, if we keep coming to be fed, glory to God, one of these days you're going to be able to get it right. But you got to get up. You got to get up and create new memories. You got to get up and do something new. You got to get up and walk into your promise. It is not my God. Hey, that my son of the behold. I don't know who this is for. Glory to God. But it is not your portion that you should die in the wilderness. Because you failed to get up and keep going. Thank you, Jesus. Because again, a just man followed seven times. And you might have just been, you might have been about to step into perfection. If you had gotten up again, but you stayed there like the prodigal son for some time. For some of you, not or no longer allowing yourself to create new memories, new ideas, a new attempt on life, a brand new try, a fresh start. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Then there's a thing that is called 
or did they describe as transient global amnesia? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Transient global amnesia, which is a TGA for, a, for short, is a poorly understood condition. We're talking about spiritual amnesia today. And I didn't know that there were different types of amnesia like this. Amnesia. It said transient global amnesia, TGA, is a poorly understood condition. It says if you develop it, you will experience confusion or agitation that calms and goes repeatedly over the course of several hours. It says that you may experience memory loss in the hours before the attack. Hear me. You will probably have no lasting memory of the experience. Hallelujah. See, 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 spiritual transient global amnesia is purely demonic. Uh, have you ever had a, heard of a situation where a person, glory to God, they, 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 were, they were experiencing some type of ailment in their body? And no matter how many times they've gone to the doctor and the doctors have checked them out and, and, and the doctor can find no medically proving or they cannot, the doctors can't find anything medically to agree with their symptoms or, or the occurrences of what's going on in that patient's body or with that patient's health. The, 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 the doctors that have spent eight to ten years in school studying medical science cannot find out what is going on. And that is the same thing that has happened with some of, of, of us that are experiencing a spiritual form of transient global amnesia. Nobody knows where the attack is coming from. Glory to God. It goes on to say that scientists think that TGA occurs as a result of seizure-like activity or brief blockage of the blood vessels supplying your brain. They said they think because they still have not figured out where it's coming from. And, 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 and let me prophesy to some of you, glory to God, because some of you, glory to God, you're saying, hallelujah, you see, you, you, oh my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, hallelujah, my God, my God, thank you, Jesus. Some of you, my God, some of you, you say, I pay my tithes. I live right. I, I love the Lord, but I just can't seem to get a break. I just can't seem to figure out why every time I put my hand to something, something goes wrong. My God. My God. And although because we don't want to have a case of misdiagnosis, I, I, I want to submit to you that what could be the case in some instances is a simple matter of being tried by the fire uh, to perfect you and to get you ready for your promise. But there's chances in other instances, glory to God, that where everything is going wrong, uh, that, 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 that it may just be demonic activity working against your assignment in God in this life. Because remember, it is a poorly understood condition that, that they don't understand where it comes from. There, there is nothing that is connected to it. It doesn't make sense. I pay my tithes. I live right. I, I keep my hands clean, God. But why is it that everything I take and undertake to do something, it calls it, it falls apart in the midst of my hands. It, it crumbles right before my face because there's a demonic activity fighting against you. For those who are experiencing this spiritual version of amnesia. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's lingering. Hallelujah. There is powers of darkness at work against the Lord's righteous. Whereby nothing makes sense. Glory to God. And watch this. It says that the scientists... Don't even know what it calls comes from. And like the instance literally naturally where scientists still don't know where it's coming from. So is it so with some of your situations. So let me prophesy this to you. Glory to God. All of your sicknesses are not because you're that poor in health. And all of your failures ain't because you didn't plan right, pray right, or think it through. All woes in life are not natural for some of you. My God. 
And then glory to God, my God, there is what is called retrograde amnesia. When you have retrograde amnesia, you lose existing or previously made memories. Mm, Lord have mercy. You lose existing, God bless your Pastor Trinise Duns, or, 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 or previously made memories. Now, this is the part that I want to talk about. Glory to God, some of us, we've been in another way, trodden down underfoot of when we're the victors. The Bible says that we shall tread upon the serpent's head. The Bible says that he had, that Christ has given us power to tread upon the scorpions and the, and the serpents and that nothing by any means shall harm us. But many of us have forgotten who we are. The Bible says, I believe in Luke 9 and 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said that he called his disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And the Lord would have us to know to remember who you are. Remember the power that works in you. Remember that I have called you as a head and not a tail. I have called you to have spiritual domination over the principalities and the powers and the spiritual wickednesses in high places and over the rulers of the darkness of this world. Because some of us have forgotten we have lost our existing and previously made memories. Some of us have forgot what God has brought you through. Some of us have experienced God in a way that you know nobody else could have gotten you out of it but the Lord. Some of us have forgotten the power whereby the Bible said that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives also in you. We're suffering from spiritual amnesia. We have forgotten the power that works in, in, in us. We have forgotten, glory to God, that there is a testestor that has died, that has enacted the will of God for our lives, that the promises of his word are readily available and accessible to the people of God who has been washed by the blood of the Lamb, who have confessed Christ with their mouths and believe Him in their hearts, and not just have done this confession thing and have mistakenly thought that you have no responsibility of your call. And I'm not talking about a call to preach. I'm not talking about a call to prophesy, a call to intercession and to pray. I'm talking about your call whereby the scripture says that my God, that when you come into Christ, he has given you power to become the sons of God. That call. Because before he ever wants you to pick up a microphone and preach to somebody else, he said, you yourself must first be converted. He said, I'm calling you first into sonship and relationship and into daughterhood because the blind can't lead the blind. He said, I need you to get the beam out of your own eye before you go trying to preach to somebody else. So this call that we're talking about that we need to come into remembrance is the call of sonship. God is calling us to remember from where we've fallen. And I'm not talking about falling into just straight sin and you drinking and smoking and adultering and fornicating. But many of us have fallen from our first love. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Y'all know the scripture. Revelation chapter. Behold. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Many of us have fallen from our first love. You've been overcome like Martha. You've gotten too encumbered with the works of God that your relationship now suffers. You have no remembrance that this is your first call, sonship, daughterhood. Intimacy with the Father God. Because from that place, everything else flows from the head down. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember your first love. Many of us who are suffering spiritual retrograde amnesia. Because it says you lose with this condition existing and previously made memories. Some of you, if we be honest, some of us don't know the last time that you were in the presence of God and the tears. I'm not talking about in church. I'm talking about in your home. I'm talking about just you and God. Where nobody else's anointing is around to jumpstart you. Where nobody else's, my God, today. Where nobody else's relationship with God that you can clean from. I'm talking about just you and God. Some of us can't remember the last time that you went on your knees and the tears Roll down your face because of your own personal relationship with God. Because we have forgotten. We're too busy pastoring and preaching and servicing. And it's all well and done and it's good and it's good that we're not idle. And it's good that we've put our heads to the plow. But after so long. Martha, you got to learn how to sit down and get at his feet like Mary. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It says that older memories, such as memories from childhood, are usually affected more slowly. Diseases such as dementia cause gradual retrograde amnesia. Hallelujah. 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 And and mm, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me with this, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Because there's a thing that that I just have to be honest that's bothersome into my spirit. Hallelujah. Not only have we forgotten who we are. Not only have we forgotten whom we serve. But many of us. Help me Holy Ghost. I feel you. Many of us have become likened unto the world. And our opinions have overtaken us. We live in a dispensation of time where everything is right now. Instant messages, instant grits, instant this, instant that, Instagram. Everything is instant. But the Bible that I read and know says, wait, I say on the Lord. There is a thing that is called tarry, which simply means to wait a while. We don't know how to tarry. We don't know how to wait until God shows up. Even in our church services, we 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 got we got to we got to give the people a certain time. I, I need to. I, I don't need to be no longer than an hour now. I give God an hour, and that's it. You know that there's 24 hours in a day, which means. That which means that if you give God 2.4 hours, two hours and 40 minutes in one day, you just did your bare minimum because that's the tithe of a day. Oh, my God. Y'all didn't hear that. If you give God two hours and 40 minutes each day of your life, you've only gave him 10 percent of your day. And that still ain't enough. Oh, my God. But I want to talk about, and I'm not saying that to throw off because I don't give God 2.4 hours every single day of my life. I'm just saying it by way of something to think about. That's 10% of 24 hours. 
But anyway, or actually 12, so, well, something like that. But anyway, so, so these opinions is what the Lord is after. We have become so opinionated. And I, I, and I want to point something out to you. And I, and I hate to have to go here, but I'm going here. The Bible says to enter ye in at the straight gate, right? It says for wide is the gate and broad is the way. I'm in Matthew 7 and 13 through 15. That leadeth to destruction because see, we then forgot who God is. And we forgot that we are not of this world. See, that's another amnesia we, we, we dealing with in the church, in the body. It says, enter ye in in the straight gate. A a enter ye in at the straight gate, excuse me. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And my God, broad is the way. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And it says, and many there be which go in their et. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the path or the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. It says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Not here I am. I'm the devil and I came to kill you and I came to deceive you. He says in sheep's Clothing, which will look like it's for your good. But inwardly, newscast, they are ravening wolves leading you to your own destruction because you have learned the ways of the heathens and you have learned the ways of the world and you have taken on spiritual amnesia and you have forgotten what God requires of the people that are in this world but not of it. So God has sent me as his prophet to remind you of what he expects of the kingdom folk. So when it, it, it says, glory to God, hallelujah, it, 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 it says we're in the world, but not of it. Or have we forgot that we are not of the world? Spiritual amnesia. Or have some of us become a part of the world and you don't even recognize it? And, I, and I, I'm sorry, I got to deal with this. If the whole world is singing one tune and one song on the news all day long in the media, when do we, who are not of this world, take a step back and say, I'm kingdom? If the whole world is saying it, I might should examine it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. When do we stop and think where we fit in this narrow path? Oh, God. If we're singing this, if the world is singing one song, what should we be singing? Is our counsel the world? If it is, we might not know God like we once did. Or, or, or the way we think that we currently or presently do or think of ourselves more than what we should. We, My God, let me tell you something, people of God. The Lord dealt with me a few months ago and he showed me plainly. I see Elder Massa. I had a conversation with Elder Massa about this. The Lord had to show me and tell me plainly because I didn't, I didn't see it. He said, you ain't where you used to be. I'm talking about in my walk, in my personal relationship, my prayer time, and how I used to spend 45 minutes to an hour almost daily in prayer. He said, you ain't where you used to be. And when he spoke it, the, 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 the veil came off of my eyes and I was like, oh my God, how did I become so far removed from where I used to be in God? 
And I'm not talking about platforms and how many people came to church and how many people rallied around me and how many people patted me on my back and said, oh, preacher, the pastor, that was a good word. I ain't talking about none of that. I'm talking about just me and God. He said, you are not where you used to be. And the, I, and the scales were removed from my eyes. And I want to tell some people, some of you ain't where you used to be. Because if you were, you would be able to see things more clearly than what you see them. Because the devil, hallelujah, where is it in the Bible? In, in Matthew 7, it says that there will be, hallelujah, many false prophets, while in, my God, in sheep's clothing that will deceive you. But that are inwardly raving as wolves. And some of you, I know you're not where you used to be. Because if you were, you would have something going off in your inner man saying something ain't right. Hallelujah. But some of us have become a part of the world and we don't even know it. Because we have forgotten who God is. And we've forgotten where he has come. Oh, God, we have forgotten who we are. Oh, my God, we have forgotten, glory to God, hallelujah, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, as the scripture says. So let us, let us go down a journey of the scripture. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 15 and 19, it says, if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. See, that's why you have to be careful. That's why I'm not afraid when people talk against me. And that's why I, I'm not moved when people have opinions about me and they feel by their opinions that I'm the one that's off. No, baby, I ain't off. I'm, 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 I'm walking in another tune. I'm not tuned into the world. And if the whole world is saying it, then what is going on in your Holy Ghost that you don't know something ain't right about it? Because if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. And they will speak well of you. It goes on to say, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. We done forgot who we are. John James 4 and 4 declares, you adulterous people. Oh God, my God, my God, my God. It says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself or herself an enemy of God. And I don't care if you don't like it, but if you listen to the news more than you hear what God says to your prophet, you have a problem. Because you have become a friend of the world. And they're going to saw God, my Jesus. And they're going to send some of you to hell. Because you have, my God, because you have built alliances with the world. And you don't know how far you've fallen from God. John 17 and 11 declares, I am no longer in the world. But they are in the world and I am coming to you. My God. I'm going to stop right there. Romans 12 and 2, do not be conformed to this world. Can I say that again? Do not be conformed to this world. The world tell you one thing and you ain't got no pushback. The world tell you this and the world tell you that. And you don't say, you don't question nothing. And the whole world, if the whole world be against you, let me tell you something, people of God. And see, the scripture says, my God, help me with this, Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Romans 13, and I believe, I believe it's Romans 13 and, 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 and two, or Romans 13 and it's, it's one of them. It's Romans 13 and two. It talks to Romans 13 and one and two. And it says, and it tells us here that the Paul is talking to the Roman church, the church of God in Christ Jesus in Rome. Glory to God. And he tells them to obey the laws of the land. Now watch this. But watch this. What you have to understand about Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. Those three Hebrew boys that are better known by some of you as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That when the king, my God, when the king of Babylon, 
Nebuchadnezzar, glory to God, he also made a decree and put his signet on it, which means that it was a law in the land for them to bow to another God. So you have to have proper context because when Paul said obey the laws of the land, he did not mean obey the laws of the land if it means disobeying the laws of God. Oh my God today. See, we got to always have proper context because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have bowed to the image and said, well... I know God says don't bow to any other God but me, but because I'm in Babylon and now the king has made this a law in the land, I guess I got to bow. No, this is when, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. This is when the law of the Lord should have its perfect work in you. When the world is telling you one thing and God is telling you something else. And should you obey man rather than God? That is the problem with the church. Hallelujah. That is the problem with the church. We, glory to God, we are a people that have, my God, have become a friend to the world. Oh, Jesus. Just like it says in uh, glory to God, just as it says in James 4 and 4. Romans 12 and 2, as I started off, let me finish it. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. Where is your discernment? No, because you have been, my God, today, because the news, my God, and the media, which belongs to the devil, the prince and the power of the airwaves, have deceived you. And my God, my God, and my God, the scripture says, who have bewitched you? It says in Romans 12 and 2, you should be able to discern what the will of God is. What is the good and acceptable and perfect thing of God? Come on, help me hold they go. John 17 and 16 said that they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Should there be my God? Shouldn't you have some type of semblance and resemblance to your Savior, the Messiah? John 17, 14 and 15. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Why you look like the world and you belong to the Messiah? Why you look like the world? Why you agree with everything that the world says to you when you are a called out people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood? Oh my God, because you have spiritual amnesia. You done forgot from where you've come. You done forgot what God has placed on you. You have forgotten the commandments of God. You have forgotten who you are. He says that in John 17, 14 and 15, I have given them your word and the word has hated and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. He said, I, I do not ask that you take them out of the world. This is his prayer to the father, the Messiah, but that you keep them from the evil one. First John 2 and 15 he says, do not love the world. Why have you forgotten with the commandments of God? Do not love the world or the things of the world. If any of you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Hallelujah. The love of the Father is not in you because we have fallen from where we once was. The news is your God and you don't even know it. Because if God gives your pastor a word from the spirit and you listen to the world rather than the spirit, who is your God? Because all our opinions matter. Should we obey? Now, see, when, 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 the, when the apostle said it, he was talking about, uh, my, he was talking externally. 
He said, should we obey man rather than God? In other words, should we, the apostles of God, the disciples of Christ, the Messiah, should we obey you rather than God? But now we have too many opinions and now we need to ask that same question internally. Should I obey myself rather than God? Should I lift up my opinion rather than what God says? Oh my God. Do not love the world or the things in the world. He says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. But you've gotten the world leading you now. You've gotten the world telling you what to do now. And the Bible says in Matthew, the seventh chapter, 13 through 15, it says broad is the way that leads to destruction. So if everybody else is doing it. What sets you apart from the world? We're like sheep led to the slaughter who have bewitched you and blinded your eyes that you cannot see what's happening right before your very eyes. The Messiah said having eyes, but they still can't see. And the problem with deception is that you don't know when you deceived. Can't nobody tell you nothing because you deceived. You think you know it. You think you're still that close to God. Oh, Jesus. And no matter, oh God, and no matter how your relationship with God or how you see your own relationship with God, my God, there is a priestly order that God puts in place. And if he gives somebody to watch for your soul, then that means he's going to show that person that has a watchmanship for your soul things that you might can't see because you are not called to watch your own soul. Oh my God, what is wrong with us? Who has bewitched us? Hallelujah. 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 John 18 and 36. It says, and Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to point out how many times he deals with this same thing to tell you that you are of a separate entity. That you are a royal priesthood, that you are the chosen of God. You are God's elect. We don't follow the ordinances of the world. But because we have forgotten the scripture, we have forgotten the commandment of God. We have forgotten that we are elect people, that he has separated us and set us apart. We've gotten comfortable in our land of captivity. And now we let master tell us what to do. And I ain't talking about master Jesus. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. He says, sanctify them in John 17 and 17 and, and sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. My God. Hallelujah. John 15 and 17 through 17, 15, 17 through 19. These things I command you so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. It hated me first. If you are of the world, the world will love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. How is it that we don't see? That when we're not of the world, we're supposed to be speaking against it. We're supposed to be watchful and prayerful. We're supposed to be able to discern what others cannot discern. We're supposed to see what others cannot see. We're not supposed to be the sheep led to the slaughter. My God. Spiritual amnesia. The last one is called infantile amnesia. It says that most people can't remember the first three to three to five years of life. This common phenomenon is called infantile or childhood amnesia. Some of us have forgotten our first love. The convictions aren't as strong as they used to be. 
Some of us, we become comfortable. As I stated earlier, this, it, this, this is those opinion folks. Well, your opinions have been lifted up next to God. I am the Lord that God and beside me, there is no other. Your opinions, my God, your opinion shouldn't be where God sits. Your opinion shouldn't come up to God's throne. You should dethrone what you feel and what you think. Because let God's word be true. The scripture simply says, obey God. We think God's word is an option. We think that his commandments are based on if you feel like it or not. Like you're shopping for food on the cereal all out. Like you can pick and choose what you will. The commandments of God are the commandments of God. And, 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 and it's interesting for us New Testament saints that there was a young man that came to the Messiah and said, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? Glory to God. And he said, keep the commandments. He said, which ones? And he went down the list. He went down the list of the commandments. Now, I know that we're not saved by the law alone. Because whether we're Hebrew or Greek or whoever else, we must be washed by the washing of the word. Nevertheless, hallelujah. Nevertheless, glory to God. We still must keep his word. We've forgotten from where we fall. We, we, we've forgotten who God is. And we've forgotten who we are in the Lord. And some of us have forgotten the specificities of what God calls us out from. And he says, be ye separate and be holy, for I am holy. And people of God, when the father says, be you separate, he is not just talking about how we have seen it in the church. Oh, well, I don't drink and I don't smoke and I don't this and I don't do that and I don't do that. You, yeah, you just separated yourself from all of that, but you have not separated yourself and come out of the world because the world is leading you. Media is leading you. People that ain't even thought about God, you letting them lead you. Be ye separate and be renewed by the renewing of your mind. I hate this. I have to hate to bring this up to, but, 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 but it grieves my spirit to see so many Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, speaking in tongues, believers, and you still fall prey to the deception that the book of Matthew told us was going to come someday. What is what? Where is the disconnect? How is it that Holy Ghost filled people are falling prey to what the scripture says that there will come a time that some of us will have ears and still can't hear what the spirit is crying to his people? How is it that some of us who have the spirit of truth living in us are the ones that the scripture says that will have eyes to see but still can't see? Who has bewitched you? I'll tell you who. Broadcasting spells that have been broadcast through media over the televisions. And you've been watching them from years and years and years and years and years and years. And you believe the news more than you believe the spirit of God. That's who bewitched you. You've been bewitched and you don't even know it. You've been deceived and there's been a cloak that has been placed over your spiritual discernment that has shut off your ability to spiritually reason and you don't even know that you are the deceived. My God. Other people's opinions in your ears. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The whole world is telling you to go and get a shot and you running. Like a lamb to the slaughter. And you ain't even thought. Well, wait a minute. If the world is saying it, let me go to God and see what God is saying. Oh, my God. We, let me let us go down from this place. Spiritual 
amnesia. Whether it be retrograde, glory to God, or 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 any of the other three, or infantile, or or glory to God, or whether it be my God, anterograde, my God, spiritual amnesia is what the church is suffering from. We didn't forgot who God is, and we didn't forgot what it means to be separate from Him for for Him. Come out of the world don't mean stop drinking and smoking only. Come out of the world don't just mean stop fornicating and, and living adulterous lives. It's more to it than that. Come out of the world and be ye separate means just that. Be a holy people. Keep the commandments. Show yourself. My oh God, have mercy today. Put some work in. Do y'all hear me? Be ye separate does not just mean, well, I don't drink alcohol and I stopped smoking weed and I stopped fornicating and I told that man he had to get out of my house. Okay, yeah, that's part of it. But be ye separate goes beyond that. Be ye separate means that you are a holy people. Israel, conduct yourselves as such. Remember, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let you go. Remember, the problem with Israel was that they wanted what the other people and the other nations had. Oh, give us a king like the other nations. Not understanding that they had rulership from the king of kings. They had the best thing that was smoking. But they wanted to be like the other nations. Give us a king like everybody else because we need a man to represent us when they had a priestly order when God spoke to the prophet directly and the prophet came and gave them the commandments of Yah and said this is what you shall keep and this is how all nations shall know that you are separate from any other nation of people but we have spiritual amnesia and we have forgotten from whom we've come from and the commandments that he requires of our lives. We have forgotten that he says, be ye separate and be ye holy. For I, your Lord God, the King of glory, the Alpha and the Omega, the Abba Father, Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, I am your God, and you shall be to me my people, which are called by my name. But if you just humble yourselves and pray, 2 Chronicles 2, 7 and 14, I believe. Hallelujah. If you humble yourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. What wicked ways? Not just uh, drinking and smoking, but the wicked ways of your opinion. Opinion being lifted up next to God. Your wicked ways of letting the world lead you. And ain't nothing going off in your Holy Ghost, in your spirit to say, wait a minute. God said, I'm supposed to be separate from this world. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves. Stop thinking you so, you so, you there. Stop thinking that you got all the answers. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn the news off and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal your land. I'll come and tell you what it is for real. If you just humble yourself in the presence of the Almighty, I'll speak to you great mysteries. I will heal you from your spiritual amnesia. I will wake you up and shake you up and show you who you are. If my people. Hiya. Thank you, Jesus. Who are called by my name. Would humble themselves and pray. He says, if you humble yourself, I'll exalt you. He said, but for those who exalt themselves, I'll bring you down. It's time to humble ourselves and get before the Father so that he can give us instructions 
and direction for the days to come. Because ain't no going back to normal. Y'all running to go get a shot so y'all, oh, so we can get back to normal. Ain't no more normal. And if you get that poison in your vein, you ain't going to never be normal again. Because I tell you, and I don't care who don't like it, you are changing your whole molecular structure when you go and get that in your body. It is not a regular shot. It is not a regular vaccination. It is not what you are used to. It is something completely different. But y'all, hey, what do I know? Oh, I know this one thing. The Bible says that the father does not do anything except he first reveal it to his servants, the prophets. Okay, y'all want to ignore the prophets? Y'all want to ignore what the prophets are crying? And you want to listen to the news rather than the prophets? And then you think you're going to hide behind faith? God going to protect me. Okay. No, what God is going to do, it says, I gave you warning and I told you that you would be destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And you chose not to increase in knowledge because you let the media be your God and not me who spoke through my prophets and told you what it was. Okay, y'all keep on trying to rely on that false faith that y'all want to. Jesus, the Messiah, did not use false faith when Satan tempted him in Matthew 4 and 4 and told him to jump off the temple and the angels was going to protect him. He did not say, okay, I'm going to trust God and I'm going to jump. No, he says, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord God. If God is speaking to your prophet and telling you what it is and you think you're going to do what you want to do because your opinion is greater than what God says, you are tempting the Lord God and God does not have to cover you. Y'all better hear me and wake up because I don't want no blood on my hand. I don't want nobody to die on my watch. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Because it's false faith. False faith. Well, God going to protect me. I'm going to get that shot and God going to protect me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, spiritual amnesia. You done forgot. God says be separate. I love y'all. I'm adamant. I'm passionate about it. I'm not angry. I'm passionate. Because, oh God. I'm going to say this and let me let y'all go. Because it's, 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 it's aggravating and frustrating when we are crying from the spirit of God and the people have turned themselves over to other gods and they don't even know it. Don't even know it. Don't even know it. Hallelujah. And let me say this. If you read your Bible, you know, cause we have all of these opinions of when, when, when somebody says, I'm about to let y'all go. When somebody begins to cry something, that is in opposition of what everybody else is saying and what everybody else is doing. We look at them as if they're off. But if you read your Bible, every prophet that you've ever read about has been discredited. Every prophet, Isaiah, Ezekiel, all of the prophets were saying something that was not popular. And they had the church people come against them. Let me say that again. The church people came against the prophets because the prophets were not saying what the normal church people were saying. If you study who a prophet and what a prophet really is, you will know. Prophets have always gone against the grain of the norm. Because our problem is, is that we think we know God. And God is saying something completely different. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Father, we pray that you are shaking us and waking us out of spiritual amnesia. Where we don't forget who we are and what you made us and our potential and our ability to accomplish and to overcome. But you said, be ye separate and be holy. For you said that you, the Lord God, you are holy. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you and I give you glory. Because it all belongs to you and you deserve our utmost respect and adoration and reverence. 
and our love, Heavenly Father, toward thee. Father God, help us to remember who you are. Lord God, we have forgotten, Lord God, the, the faith that has been once delivered to the saints. But God, we ask for a washing and a cleansing and a purging and a purifying that we might know your voice and that we might not answer the stranger. That we might be shaken out of our slumber and our sleep in the mighty name of Jesus, the Messiah. Yahweh, we call on your holy name. Father, we ask that you would anoint us, God, to overcome. Father God, the Bible said that we would have eyes, but some of us still can't see. Remove the scales from our eyes. We will have ears and some won't hear. But Lord God, Lord God, open up our deaf spiritual ears that we can hear what the Spirit says to the church. Lead us in every way, God. Leave nothing to happenstance or chance. But let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path and our course, Father God. And Lord God, we just thank you today. And lastly... Lord, let us no longer have spiritual amnesia where we have forgotten that we must be separate from the world. That we must be separate from the world. Lord God, in, in increase and, and restore our spiritual discernment that if the world leaders and the world and people who belong to the devil is singing one song, we should be examining ourselves to see what it is that you are saying in the stead. Father God, cover every one of the people that I pastor. Cover this church. Cover the people that are within the reach of my voice even. Cover us on every side. And Father, I give you praise. Father God, I thank you for today. Thank you for giving me the grace to minister this word. And Lord God, I pray that it will not fall on deaf ears. But Lord God, that we will hide your word in our hearts. That we will meditate on your word. Day and night that we would be like trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth our fruit in its season. That whatever we would do, we would prosper in it because we're doing it unto the Lord. And we're doing it in obedience to you and your word and your command, your commandments, Holy Father. And Father, we thank you and all that we know not to pray. We ask that the spirit of truth would make intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. And we thank you. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Spiritual amnesia. And the Lord has come to wake us up and shake us up. The Lord has come to give us life. And that we might have life more abundantly. But remember this last thing. This last talking point. Matthew 7, 13 through 15, maybe around the 14th verse, he says, narrow is the path that leads to life. And there's not going to be many that find it. See, that's the reality. Everybody that calls him Lord, Lord, but does not what he says is not going to inherit the kingdom. Everybody that blesses him with their mouth, the reality is, is that it's not from the meditations of their heart. And they will not inherit the kingdom. We are in this world, but not of it. And he says, in order to inherit the kingdom, you have to come out of the way of the broadness of the world and step into a narrow path. The whole world has an opinion. The whole world wants everything to be represented now. There's a thing called babies in place of babies. They are now pushing, hear me, that children, when they are born, no longer to be labeled a gender, but that they will have up until the age of four years old to determine if they are a boy or girl. Don't matter what's hanging down now or what's down now. That they, at four years old, will be able to determine what they identify as. The world has an opinion. The world wants everything and everything abominable to be reflective and represented. And then they push it off on you. And you are supposed to be a separate people. A holy nation, a royal priesthood. In the world, but not of it. I went through several scriptures where the Messiah tells you that we ain't part of this world. 
We just passing through. And while we're passing through, we have a responsibility to not just sit and take everything that the world pushes on us. As Elder Thurman, I just saw on the screen, the church is being silent. We accept anything and everything. But we must be separate and come out from the world. And again, that don't just mean I ain't drinking and smoking and having sex outside of marriage no more. That means completely come out of Babylon. And all of his projections on you. That's why the Lord says, I'm going to say this and we're done. That is why the Lord says to write it. Write my word. He said, put it on a miter. He said, write my word on you. He said, when you sit with your children at the table, rehearse it with them. Because he knew a day was coming that there was going to be a great push for evil. And it needs to be written in our hearts that we might not sin against him. Be ye separate and let today be the day that we ask the Lord in our own hearts, Father, heal me from spiritual amnesia so that I can remember from whence I've come. I know I've messed up. I know that I've come short. But Lord, let me have the grace to be like the latter end of the prodigal son, that I will come to myself. And remember, not only who you are, but who I am that you've made me. A holy nation and a royal priesthood. And I have been given not a, an opinion, not a choice, but a command to be separate from the world. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I give you praise. And we love you, Lord, with all of our hearts. And when we come short, even in that. We ask for your help by the grace of God. Amen. People of God, thank you. Um, thank you for our, um, being a part of our first Sabbath service. And people of God, again, let me say this. Don't be ashamed because we're in the scripture. And so I want to thank you all for coming and being a part of our very first official Sabbath service. God bless you. And I love you all. Pastor Williams, Soul Food International Ministries. Go in peace. Shalom. Amen.